This is React Casts, episode 9, Immutability in JavaScript. Immutability is a recurrent theme in the React ecosystem. State management libraries like Redux require that you treat your data as immutable, or things will just not work. But even in plain React with local component states, we are also encouraged to always treat data as immutable. In this episode, I'll talk about why immutability is important and how it can benefit you. I will draw some comparisons between JavaScript, which doesn't treat data as immutable by default, and programming languages that have immutability built in. Finally, I will show how to make immutable operations in plain JavaScript. Ok, so let's get started. Immutability is a concept that has its roots in functional programming, and it actually means something pretty simple. Whenever we want to make changes to some data, for example, to an object or an array, we should get a new object back with the updated data, instead of directly modifying the original one. I like to think of immutability as save as, because, you know, it returns a new, changed object, while traditional in-place mutation would be like save, updating the original and letting go of earlier state. Yeah. Right, but why would I want immutability in the first place? Why even bother? Well, there are a few reasons. Immutability gives a stricter control over your data, immediately making your code safer and more predictable. It also makes it easier to implement complex features such as undo-redo, time travel debugging, optimistic updates and rollbacks, and so on. Talking specifically about React, immutability can also help achieve better performance by enabling quick and cheap comparisons between versions of the state before and after changes. Components can take advantage of this and intelligently re-render itself only when needed. This can mean a significant performance boost. You have to implement it yourself, but React Redux, for example, does this automatically for you. Now, the problem is that JavaScript is not a good language to work with data in an immutable fashion, because that's not how the language works by default. Arrays and objects, for example, are always passed as reference, and the vast majority of built-in methods mutate data in place. Let me show you an example of what I mean. I'll declare an array, const a equals 2, 1, 4, 3. Now, let me console log a. Oh, I should mention that I'm using a live prototyping setup here, so you can see the result of console log right in the same line here. Let's say that b equals a dot sort. If I log b, well, it's sorted, just like I wanted. But if I log a, notice that it's also sorted. What actually happened here is that because objects and arrays are passed as reference instead of copied over, both variables a and b point to the same array in memory and that array was directly mutated by the method sort. To give you some context, let's try this very same example in a different language, not JavaScript. Let me do this same example in Elm. Elm is a functional language that has immutability built in. Don't worry, you don't need to know Elm. It's okay if you've never heard of it. I'll just draw a quick comparison here. I'll switch to Elm testing environment and start by creating a list A equals 2, 1, 4, 3. You know, lists in Elm are not exactly like arrays, but for the purpose of this example, you can assume that they are similar. Next, I'll use sort, just like I did in the JavaScript example. The syntax here is a little different, but the method does the same thing. List.sort A. The key difference, though, is that Elm always treat data as immutable, which means that when I used sort, instead of changing the original list, it created a new one with the updated data. If I check the variable A here, look, it still contains the original unsorted list. Whenever someone says they want to work with immutability, this kind of behavior is what they are looking for. Now, this begs the question. How to work with immutability in JavaScript? To start, although most array methods we are used to, such as sort, push, pop, are destructive, which means that they change the original array, there are indeed a few non-destructive methods available. One of such methods is slice. Slice returns a piece of a given array without modifying the original one. Let me show you an example. Const houses, Erin, Frey, Greyjoy, Stark, Lannister, Tyrell. 
if I log houses.slice from index 0 and getting 4 values, it will print out Erin Frey Greyjoy Stark. But as you can see, the original array was preserved console.loghouses, and there you get it. Besides slice, there are a few other useful array methods such filter, map, reduce, that also returns new arrays instead of modifying the original one. Let me show you another example. Const direwolves, let me paste it here. So, for example, I'll filter uh, all of the alive wolves by using direwolves.filter. I'm using JavaScript ES6, also known as JavaScript 2015 here. Let me log wolves here. Perfect, it's still intact. Although I can only see a part of the log here, I can see that it's intact. Talking about JavaScript 2015, this version of the language also introduces a new operator called the spread operator. The spread operator provides an easy way to create a new array by copying over values from another array. So, for example, I'll bring the houses array back here. It works like this, three dots and it copies all of the values. Updated houses now is a copy of the original houses array. I can change it independently of the original one. That's already very cool, but the real power comes from combining the spread syntax to make different operations like adding and removing in a single pass. For example, if I do this, Targaryen, not only I'm copying all of the previous items, but I'm also adding a new one, all at once. The houses array wasn't changed, and I have a new updated houses array with the changed data. Easy, right? I can also combine the spread operator with array's slice method for more complex operations. For example, I can remove an item with a specific index from the array by using const in depth, spread operator, houses.slice 0 to 4, and again, spread operator, houses.slice 5. Let me console log it. Great, except for the house Lannister, nobody pays their debts. I can even use the spread syntax to update items at any specific index. Const updated houses equals dot 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 houses dot slice zero to one, fray of the crossing, and spread syntax house dot slice two. So, using the spread operator and non destructive methods such as slice, filter, and map allows you to do pretty much all sorts of data operations in arrays in an immutable way. And what about manipulating JavaScript objects in an immutable way? Let's use the spread operator, right? Well, not so fast. Actually, JavaScript 2015 just defines spread syntax for usage with iterables such as arrays, but not for objects. The good news, though, is that there is a proposal for object spread syntax for the next version of the language, and you can use it right now with Babel. If you're using Create React app, then everything is already set up for you and it just works. If you're configuring Babel yourself, you can either use Babel's React app preset or the Transform Object REST Spread plugin. Look into the show notes for more details. I already have my Babel set up here, so let me just create an object to illustrate. Const state, an object, name Jon Snow, occupation Lord Commander, skills, and empty array, because, you know, Jon Snow knows nothing. Now, using the spread syntax, I will copy the original state object's keys and values, while at the same time changing the occupation value. New state. Spread operator, state, and pass a new occupation value. Let me log both the state and new state. Great, the occupation has changed, and the old state, it is untouched. We are almost done, but take a deep breath because there is something you need to pay attention to. The spread operator makes shallow copies, which means it only goes one level deep while copying. The consequence is that if you have nested objects and arrays inside your object, these nested objects will not be copied over. Let me show you the problem. In this example here, new state is a shallow copy of the original state object. The name and occupation values were copied, but there's a nested skills array here, which was not copied over and still points to the same skills array in memory. So if I try, for example, to add an item using like 
newstate.skills.push fighting. I will end up changing the original one, referenced by both state and new state. If you want to update the array, you need to make it in an immutable fashion as well. So if I delete this, I use the spread operator, copy over the skills, and add fighting. Yeah, it sounds complicated, but again, if you stick to the immutable patterns and avoid using destructive methods such as push, you will be fine. And just for the sake of demonstration, if I want to update both the occupation and the skills at the same time, I can do it by using the spread operator at all levels I want to update. So if I delete everything, I can do it at once by doing spread operator state, change the occupation, and to set the skills I use the spread operator again and add fighting. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that although JavaScript may not be the best language in the world to deal with data in an immutable way, it can be done. Just stick to the few existing non-destructive methods just as slice, filter, map, reduce and a few others and use the new spread operator to help out with copying and insertion. Now, there is an alternative to working with immutability in JavaScript that is getting more and more traction these days. Forgetting about objects and arrays altogether, letting go entirely of JavaScript building data structures in favor of custom, truly immutable data structures. There are quite a few libraries that provide such data structures, including Facebook's own Immutable.js, Mori, and others. The first direct benefit of using these libraries is that it makes it more convenient to manipulate data because they provide not only the data structures themselves, but an assortment of methods to easily make changes in an immutable way without having to explicitly copy data over like I was doing with the spread operator. But you know, they also come with some cons. To start, it can be a nuisance to deal with both native JavaScript data and immutable data in the same application. You know, it gets confusing. Sometimes you will try to use immutable methods on player arrays and objects and it won't work, or use square brackets or curly brackets in immutable data structures and it also won't work. Not to mention the friction caused with other JavaScript libraries, because you know, you can't simply pass an immutable map to, say, low dash, for example. I will give you my advice on the matter. This is not a rule, it's just my personal opinion. If you are only after a simpler or more convenient way to update data in an immutable way in your reducers or React components, do not use Immutable.js or other immutable libraries, because that's not what these libraries are about. These libraries are about bringing true immutable data structures to JavaScript. This comes at a cost of additional cognitive load that only pays off if you understand and embrace immutability in your whole application. I see more and more people overwhelmed by using React and Redux alone, and I don't think it's a good idea to throw in another complex constraint just because it looks cool or sounds important. Now, don't get me wrong here, Immutable.js is awesome. I use it in many React Redux projects with success, and I would certainly use it again. The message here is, use it only if you understand the benefits of immutability and you want to embrace it in your whole application. Otherwise, I think you would be better off just using plain JavaScript. You just watched an episode of React Casts. Please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon to get notified of new releases. This episode was sponsored by the Full Stack Academy of Code, the top-ranked coding bootcamp in the United States, with JavaScript programs in New York and Chicago as well as remotely. Learn more at fullstackacademy.com.